Hi, I'm Colleen of Colleen Sews and Chats, and this is my tutorial for the hanging towel with the seminal pieced band. Grab your fabrics and let's get started. I'm starting by layering my fabrics, darks and lights, and cutting them at one and a half inch strips. I have several fabrics here because I'm going to do more than one band myself, but the measurements I give are for one band. And then I will chain piece the strips together until I have a solid piece. I'm using my quarter inch foot and alternating dark and light. I'm finger pressing them all to the dark side before I put my iron on them to get them to lay nice and flat for me. Now I'm going to get a square edge over here on one side, so I have something to line my ruler up with, and I'm going to cut these at one and a half inch strips also. Now this part is simpler than it looks. Line your strips up and the strip to the right of each piece. Pull down one seam, flip it over, pin them, and you're going to sew your quarter inch and put them all together in that fashion. Now I made a template two and a half inches by eight inches so I could cut these apart and get the design I want from them. Yours should be just a simple trim down to two and a half by eight inches. Since I cut mine a little bit awkward, I am adding a solid piece to the end to get a straight 8 inch by 2.5 inch strip here. If you hear a mumbling chipmunk, 
it's because I didn't edit this as well as I probably could have, I guess. <laughs> Go figure. So ignore the chipmunk. Unless it's very loud and then you might want to listen to it. Who knows? Now I am getting my interfacing. I had this uh, Pelon. Nine oh six F. Why I'm talking in chipmunk? I, I I didn't intend to do a voiceover, but here we are. So hopefully I'm louder than the chipmunk, and it doesn't give you a headache. I'll remember not to do this next time. I'm adjusting my interfacing to get my two and a half by eight inches. And I folded it over several times to make it thicker. So now I've got my band, the interfacing or batting would work just fine. Oh, I am so sorry about chipmunk. And I have a solid piece for the backing of the band. Now I'm going to layer my pieced fabric on top of the pelon and then put the backing strip right sides together with the pieced fabric. I'll be doing a quarter inch down either side, either side, both sides. Let's, let's go with both sides. Going down both sides with my quarter inch, making sure I catch all of that. I needed to change my needle. I've noticed that's a problem with me. It eats more corners when I haven't changed my needle. You can put the interfacing on either side of the piece. Just have to watch how you turn it out in the end. Because you want that interfacing between the piece and the backing piece. In this next part, if you've got one of those fancy hemostat thingy majiggies, works great to turn this out. I'm gonna go between the piece fabric and the backing fabric and pull it wrong side out. I actually have a hemostat. Why I didn't get it? Because I am a glutton for punishment. You do better. <laughs> okay, now I went blurry. Oh. I am trying to pinch those sides. I'm pushing back with my pointer finger and down with my thumb as I turn these edges the direction I want. And I'm going to give it a quick press to help it lay flat 
and I don't know what I'm saying. At least in chipmunk. I don't know what I'm saying in chipmunk. I feel really bad about that. And I'm just doing some very quick quilting on this just to keep the layers together for me. And it's a really simple quilting. I'm just going to do a quick straight stitch in a zigzag formation kind of. You can do as much or, li or as little as you want. I just want these two pieces held together firmly, these three pieces held together firmly for me. I wanted to use the fabrics from the layer cake I've been using and they weren't long enough because I need 17 inches long so I gave them some pressing, starched them and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch fabrics right side together. I just picked a side honestly. Once I starched them they're not quite straight so I just Pick the straighter edge, made a straighter edge. I did something. And I sewed down about a quarter inch. It doesn't matter at this point because you'll see when I'm measuring, I'm measuring from the seam that I made to get my seven by 17. And if I was smart, I would have taken this plum out of chipmunk because I know I explained it. <laughs> so I've sewn my two fabrics together. And I want them 17 inches long. So we're going to trim this down. I'm using Missouri Star rulers. My eyes like them really well. I'm mathing. In case you didn't hear the mumbling chipmunk, I'm doing 8.5 inches up from that seam and over. Then I'll use that straight edge to go 7 inches across. Counting's hard. Sometimes it takes several times. And now I have the two tone that I want for my topping, backing, I'm not really sure what to color, call it. We're going to prep the towel now. Do this towel in half lengthwise and cut it. So this is actually half a towel and I have the wrong side facing up. I'm going to start the pleats and I'm marking with a tailor's chalk. So fold in half lengthwise. I think this is lengthwise. You can see what I'm doing, right? Right. Oh, okay. And then mark the center. And then I'm going to fold the right edge, that's why I turned it, to that center mark. And mark that fold. And then I'm going to take that edge to that mark and mark that fold. So I now have three marks on the right side, right hand side, because this is the wrong side of the towel, remember, and then I'm going to repeat with the left side. Fold the left to the center, mark the fold I made, left to that mark, mark the fold I made. Now I'm going to... 
talk a whole lot with my hands and say absolutely nothing. Pinch the first mark to where the mark is in between my fingers right there. I can see the mark and I'm pinching the bottom to help me fold it over to the center mark. So I took the first mark right of the center, pinched it and folded it over. And I'm going to do the same thing with this left side. I'm going to pinch it, pull it over and clip it. You can use pens. I like clips with big chunky stuff like this. And then I'm going to take the outer edge to the closest mark to it, clip that, fold it over. Now here you can do a stay stitch. You don't have to do a stay stitch, which is just a stitch along the top that will be in the seam when this is done. I'm going to do a stay stitch because it makes it easier for me to work with on the next part. And I'm going to do this closer to a quarter inch more. I, I wouldn't do more than a quarter inch here, but you could do less than a quarter inch and it'd be fine because it's just holding it down for you while you work with it in the next step. And here you can see the back of the towel and the front of the towel and the pleats you just created. And that yellow mark should wash out. Disclaimer, I have had it not wash out on a quilt before. So why did I use it? Nobody knows. I, I make questionable choices sometimes. Now we're going to Add the towel to the backing top fabric. Here's an example of one. Spoiler alert, I did this one wrong and I had to fix it. It still works as is, but it could have worked better. <laughs> kind of the story of my life. So I'm trying to decide how I want the fabric to lay, for the towel to lay, for it to turn out with the color I choose on top. So I wanted that dark gray blue on this one to face the same size side as the right side of the towel. So it comes over the top and if it shows, that's what's showing. So for this one, straightening my towel right side up, getting my fabric, I want the planar fabric to show when I turn it. So it's going at the bottom of the towel. Again, the topper backing is right side up. So we're going to fold like a burrito pillow, get our edges straight up here. And in case I didn't mention it, when you're doing the pleats, your edges are straight at the top there. And you need a half inch. Don't need a half inch. You'll have a half inch extra fabric because the pleated towel is now approximately six inches. So I'm actually measuring my half inch and clipping it here. And I'm going to measure the half inch on the other side because I want these to be more precise. If you can eyeball it, great, you do you. I can't. <laughs> so I'm measuring a half inch over, lining up my towel right there, and I'm clipping it here. You can, I'm putting more clips here because I find it droops in the center when I start moving it around. So right side of the towel up, 
right side of the fabric facing the back of the towel, fold it over like a burrito pillow, roll the towel up, then fold your right side of your fabric over onto the towel, line all these edges up, and instead of making two passes here, I'm going to line my edges up and fold those corners over at the same time. It all works out in the end. You could do a back stitch and go across to come back after you've stitched across the whole thing and fold your corners over and you might like that better looks wise for you. I find this is just fine. So I'm lining my edges up and I'm trying as neatly as possible to turn that over and keep my fabrics all lined up. And yeah, they try to slide out. So now I've got all my edges. Nope, oh, don't have all my edges. Getting all my edges. See the towel. It wants to fall down in the middle there too. It's a finicky little thing. I don't know why I said that. So fiddle with this as much as you want, as little as you want. And now we're ready to sew across it. And I will backstitch at the beginning and at the end. This is my quarter inch foot, but I'm not using the quarter inch as my guide. I'm using the side of my foot as my guide. It's a little more than a quarter inch. You could, I don't know, you do. You could measure a half inch, do a half inch in perfectly. I find that this is very easy for my eye to find the side of that foot and it's over the quarter inch, which I like also. So that's where I'm lining it up with the side of that foot, not my quarter inch line. And improvised hump jumper. Yeah, I should buy one, huh? <laughs> I'm not going to buy one. <laughs> I actually use it a lot. It works great. I put it underneath the back of my foot. I don't touch the needle with it. Just bring it up to the needle. Then I backstitch there and take my hump jumper away. I usually let it fall. It makes an awful noise and I didn't know I was going to do a voiceover and I didn't want it to fall. <laughs> so. Anyway, do what you got to do to get that started. This machine is not happy with a lot of things I do. And I'm removing the clips. And you're going to get a close-up. Let's go for a ride. See the side of that foot? The edge, not the quarter inch, the side. That's what I'm lining up right there. And I'll put you back where you belong. There we go. All better because I can't sew with the camera there. Not accurately. And back stitch this end. Clipping my threads. I love those little snips. Now we're gonna pull the towel out. Just reach in and Pull the towel down, push the fabric up, and it turns. Voila, like magic. We have the side that I want showing when it's over the handle. Facing up along with the right side of the towel facing up. And I'm going to fiddle with these edges. I want them turned over a half inch. If I give it a pull, it kind of turns it, but I, I'm just finicky and particular sometimes. I'm using my mat to make sure my edge is straight right there. And I'm going to finger press that edge. I put the band in last so I get it in right, and you're gonna see that I didn't get it in right because I had to go back and pick it out. I'm going to put the right way up first, but I'm leaving the wrong way in at the end so you can see how I messed it up and how I originally put the band in. Anyway, I am getting these both sides folded over and once I get them to where I'm satisfied with it, 
straight enough, I'm going to give them a clip. And I don't know if you saw it, but I gave my towel a little tug to get it pulled straighter. And now I clip and clip or pen. Oh, look at that. I'm doing both because I don't know. <laughs> I'm feeling extra today. So let's do both. Let's clip and pin and then struggle with edges some more to get them straight. Not only did I mess, mess both of these up, I made the dozen that I sold wrong. They still work. They're just not as right as they could be. So, what I've done, this is the right side of my towel. I unpicked these sides. I'll clean them up later. And removed the band. Now to get the band to go in properly when it turns, because what you're wanting is when this turns around, it will be facing like this on your stove. So that's the wrong side. It's going to come through here and face like this. Simple, one fold, no problem. That's not how I put them together. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend this has a top. And this is my top. We want the top facing down towards your towel. Top facing towards your towel. Back side of the strap facing towards what I'm going to call the side that I went up, the pretty side, that's what I'm going to call it. So, also the right side of the towel. I have the right side of my towel facing me, strap the wrong side facing me. I still have my half inch marks over here. And we're going to redo it. Except for this time, because I'm fixing it. I'm going to start on my left side. If I was putting it in fresh, I'd start on the right side and do this, but I'm going to start on my left side. Got my strap from there. Approximately a half inch. I'm going to start before where I ripped. funny. And forward a couple stitches. One, two, three. I'm going to back a couple stitches. One, two. Let's see. And I'm going to top stitch. Strap still back there. But I'm going to come across. I'm going to try to go over the stitches I had already in here. Tuck it under. I'm going to go around the back. 
the right hand side of my needle because it's going to make going over this much easier. I won't have to fight with the strap as much. You'd probably believe me if I told you how many times I had to redo this before. First time I made these. That's why I put the strap in last. And still, I do it wrong. Okay, I've got that strap in there. Snugging it up to that top seam. Carefully turning it. Not so carefully it turns out. I pulled it out. That's okay. Put it back. Look at that. No harm, no foul. Nobody's freaking out. Okay. Watch your watch your band. Let's see. We're moving. Watch your band over here. Pulled away so it doesn't catch on that. my mat again. I'm just going to top stretch here. And I'm going to go around on that one I stitched already. I don't want to come on now. Come off. Secure. It ain't going nowhere. Clean up all my threads later. Stitch it right here, both sides, pull it out, put it in right. Now, we have our towel. It's going to go on the front, pretty side out. Get my hand through it and pull it. And when you do that, this will turn. And voila, that's how it should hang. I don't know why I kept doing it wrong. Okay, now we have red, white, and blue. A little bit late for the season, but hey, maybe you'll watch this next year. <laughs> Let's hold that together just a little bit better. Now we're going to take this band. We're going to do them one at a time. We're not going to put the band in and then try sewing all the way around it. I'm going to take this band. See better like this. Take 
command. Insert it to where it's snug against the seam up here and on the line you drew. put this here just to keep that snug where I want it right next to it. I'm not putting it on it I'm putting it next to it make sure it's snug I don't think you have a pen I'm gonna put a pin here just because I can't see that line on the other side <laughs> but the fabric I don't have a light marker. Ideally, this would have been done a little bit. No, that's okay. So, I've got one side of the band, the right side. The right side of the band is in. I'm going to stick with this off white. Thread. Changing my foot to the universal foot just because I can see the line on it better for top stitching. I'm going to start in the middle, I can top stitch. Still got my machine set at 2.5. I'm going to back stitch here. Come up one, two, three, and then we'll back. One, two, three. And I'll continue to top stitch. Don't go off the edge of the band. I'm going to stop, probably an eighth before you get to the band, and then I'm stitch short. There we go. Now it's two stitches short. Just get close to the edge. I'm not perfect, just close to the edge. And this is helping hold that band where it's supposed to be as I'm doing this. I'm going to take this out. I've got my finger up next to that band. distance away or a quarter inch away and turn here. I'm just trying to go with my top stitch. Whatever it winds up to be, I'll be happy with it. Make sure that's that tells in there straight. Should not be a little tug. Don't ask why it works, but it does. stop. When we get up here, I'm going to stop and I'm going to insert that side of the band. Same as before. I want that line right there inside. Keep my fabric straight. Just put 
of myself all over the place. Trying to get it right on that line. That should hold up. I got that kind of wedging that there. sure my line's still where I want it back here. Under the band. That should just slip out on me because I tried to show you. So I'll show off this. I want to make sure these fabrics are, my side fabrics are still next to each other. Holding that down. Pulled the band toward me. Toward. And keep stitching. It may slide on you. Stop. In position, it's not a race. I get further up here before I take that pin out. Yep. And get you close up because you really can't see this. Close your eyes, we're gonna move because I don't feel like I'm ready. There's the band. Whoops. There's the band my top stitching. I'm going to come up here and then go sideways. And hopefully it caught that. I start whispering when it's that close to me. I'm pulling the band out so I can get to all of this without any trouble. Pan toward me. I'm holding it with that hand because I took the pin out. So once you do this, you'll want to make them all the time. It's just that easy. See the pant, the band is not in my way. I can get to this area right here just fine. my arm, but the needle goes up and down. I get to here, I'm pull my threads out of the way, maybe. And I'm going to go over the threads. Back turn, go over a few stitches, stop, um, back stitch twice. I will cut these off and bury them. You have to turn your band to get it out. That may be so long. And let's see how we did. I got some threads to take care of. There is your hanging to kitchen towel. Put your hand up, right side facing you, hand up, grab the towel. It's my faux bar. Here's the bar. Grab the towel, pull it through the band. Voila. Now, when this is on your stove, ideally this is going to come up. That's why I made it a little bit longer because mine kept slipping down. And there it is. Happy Fourth of July! There is a million ways, a million things you can do to this band. But if you don't cut through your template that mine fell on the floor. 2 by 8 template, one piece of fabric, 7 by 17, band 
is 2 by 8 interfacing or batting is 2 by 8 the back fabric is 2 by 8 half of a towel I hope you all enjoy your holiday this may go up after the 4th so I'm not crazy today it's July 3rd <laughs> Be the light you hope to see in others. Thanks.